Okay, there we go. Uh, hi, everybody. How you doing? Happy spring. It's spring now. That's why we have Biakia as the starting soon screen. We've looped around already because um, last year I had the idea to start doing like, you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, do like a different starting soon screen. We've looped around, and so we're back to Biakia. There we go. Um, hey, everybody. Yeah, it's a good day out. What's the topic for today? That You can always tell like a new member of whenever I do these streams because there is no topic. There's never any topic. We might have a discussion about something that may last longer than other discussions, but there's never a solid topic. I, I don't think I've ever... Well, okay, that's not true because I have done streams where it's like, okay, we're talking about like when Bleach came out, like when the, uh, the announcement came out, like Bleach was coming back. I did a whole stream just focused on that. But still, I, I will title those accordingly. When it comes to just, when you see Tekken 101 live stream, it's, it's a cavalcade of nonsense. Um, first live chat, what's up? Uh, well, you know, uh, this is the chat. This is the stream. Uh, hi, everybody. How you doing? I, I have a little box here. Uh, the chat has a box over there. Uh, I got a bunch of random fan art of myself down here. It's a nice little setup, nice little area. Uh, hey, Teching, please talk about, uh, oh, Madam Charlie's Prophecy. I, I did a video about that one, um, but to basically give you my opinion on that, I think, uh, the way that Oda set that up is, yeah, that's 100% accurate. If you're talking about the accuracy of the, um, prediction that Luffy's going to destroy Fishman Island, um, I think he is. I think, uh, Fishman Island, or rather, the red line above Fishman Island, because remember, Fishman Island is, like, in a hole that's, like, you know, in this little pocket, and then it's, like, nothing but the red line above it. Um, it's like a cave, basically, and I think that, yeah, because of Luffy, um, the red line will be destroyed, and, uh, where at least the areas, uh, Marijua and Reverse Mountain will be destroyed, and, uh, Fishman Island will crumble, but then everybody will get on the Noah, they'll evacuate, they'll get to the surface, and then they'll be able to build a new Fishman Island uh, on the ruins of, like, the Marijua. Because if the entire mountain, like, crashes down, then it'll be at, like, sea level. And they'll be able to build a new island on that. And then, uh, there you go. And then everybody will be happy. And then it will be one piece. Uh, that is not a theory I came up with. That is something that's been around for a while. Uh, the red line destruction theory or whatever you want to call it. But, yeah. Um... Let's see. Make up another fake story. Um, all right. So last night I went to the moon. Um, I was just curious. Of, I was out of cheese. What was the problem was? I was out of cheese. And I'm like, okay, I want some cheese. And uh, I remembered watching Wallace and Gromit when I was a little kid. And uh, whatever happened to Wallace and Gromit, by the way? Was that like just like a British television show or like a kid's show? Because there was like a couple of Wallace and Gromit movies that aired in America. But I think there was only like two um, but anyway, whatever. I was like, I remember that show, and I'm like, I want to go to the moon. So I got into my Jimmy Neutron uh, rocket ship that I built uh, back in, like, 2004, and uh, I blasted off to the moon. Uh, it was really fun. I said hi to Y-Man while I was there, and uh, I, I discovered the moon was actually not made out of cheese, and I was very disappointed um, walking around the moon, uh, trying to eat the rocks, and there was no cheese. But then I found a very nice vendor on the moon that did sell cheese. And so I bought some stuff from him, and it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> uh, could you do a video on Dragon Ball Super Chapter 82, which is this month's chapter? Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll do a video on it, but I did read it last night, and um, I'm liking the direction they're going right here. Um, I was not really sure about the start of this arc, of where it was going, uh, and I was kind of a little bit disappointed with some of it, but, you know, this direction we're kind of going with uh, Bardock and Goku. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm down with that to expand a little bit of the lore of Goku's past. Why not? Yeah. Are you going to do or watch the uh, JJK movie? So, fun fact, uh, I was actually going to go see that last night because I think it started last night, and I put it in my calendar even, like the JJK movie is coming out. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Jujutsu Kaisen. However, um, I've only read up to like the fourth volume, but the first volume that I ever read of JJK was actually volume zero because I was at a convention, and I saw they, they had the whole set of manga there, and I'm like, okay, well, that's so weird that I even have it back here. You know, I thought that was so weird that they had a volume, oops, sorry, they had a volume zero, 
And I'm like, all right, well, do I start at volume one or do I start at volume zero? And I thought, all right, I guess I'll start with zero. So I read this and then I found out I, I, I'm an idiot and didn't read the back of the damn book that said the prequel to Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm like, Durr, I wonder if this is the first volume of the series. There's no way to tell if this is the first volume or a prequel of this series other than the fact it says prequel on the freaking back of it, but whatever. I was at a convention. It was noisy. Anyway, so I read this, really liked it, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And now I'm reading the actual story, but then they come out with this movie, and it's like, it's the, it's the book. It's the prequel made into a movie. And I'm like, oh, well, this is perfect. But last night, I did not actually end up going. I might go tonight. I don't know, because uh, this is all I'm going to do today on YouTube. I'm just going to do this stream today. Um, but last night I actually ended up going to a Spongebob Squarepants musical. <laughs> so I could talk about that. It was a damn good musical. It was actually a really, really, uh, well-produced musical. Um, so I could talk about that. But anyway, um, yeah, that's, I might go see the movie tonight. Um, yeah. The answer is yes. Yeah, that's a, that's like, that's, that's the idea. It's like a three-minute rambling session that could be condensed down to, yes, I'm going to go see the movie tonight. But that's not what makes it fun. If I just answer the question, you know, that's not fun. What if Dr. Vegapunk made a serum that takes away devil fruit powers and vanish forever? That that would be that would be bad. Okay, next question. See, if that's all it is, then there's nothing to it. Thoughts on the burning of the Library of Alexandria. That is one of the worst travesties of like just one of the worst things that human beings have ever done, honestly. I watched a um, a documentary about that years ago. It wasn't a documentary. It was an episode of Cosmos with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And um, But I've read a lot about the Library of Alexandria, Daniel. And uh, it always kind of made... It was kind of weird that the Library of Alexandria was never considered one of the ancient wonders of the, uh, of the world. Uh, you know, you have the Great Pyramids of Giza, Statue of uh, uh, Zeus at Olympus, um, Halicarnassus, uh, Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which may or may not have ever existed. But it, the Library of Alexandria was never on there, which I always found weird. Like, this was like the sum collection of all the world's knowledge at one point in history, and that was not considered a natural wonder, but okay. Uh, the Lighthouse, though. The Lighthouse at Alexandria, that was considered a natural wonder. They were all cool, I'm just saying. You should have thrown the library in there, too. But no. Daniel Green, it was me. I burned it. Books are lame. Okay, I'm less concerned that you burned down the entire library of Alexandria, and I'm more interested in the fact that you are, you're either an immortal vampire or you have a time machine. Either way, we got to hang out sometime, man. Uh, <laughs> if the SpongeBob characters were on One Piece characters, who would each be? Um... Well, Luffy and SpongeBob actually, I think, are a pretty good one-to-one. -one. You know, SpongeBob is very energetic, very happy, and he has stretchy powers. So I think Luffy and SpongeBob would be a pretty good one-to-one. -one. Um, I think Sandy and uh, uh, Nami would make sense. Although Sandy being a squirrel would actually sync up more with being a mink. Um, I actually did a video. <laughs> this was one of my most fun videos I've ever done. For April Fool's Day last year, I did a review of Karate Island because Karate Island is an island that exists in One Piece, but it's also an island that there's an episode of SpongeBob called Karate Island. And so I did a video where I'm like, oh, you know, you have uh, Sandy and you actually think that Sandy is a mink and she also wears her um, her uh, her suit, like the dome suit. And so that kind of looks like a, a celestial dragon suit. So there's actually a lot of, you know, syncs up, sync up here with that. That's weird. Uh, would I sleep with the nine foot tall Yamato? Is Yamato nine feet tall? I didn't think she was nine feet tall. I knew she was tall, but I didn't know if she was nine feet. Hold on. Let me check on that. Actually. I'm more interested in the numbers being right than the actual, the, the, the basis of that question. That video was amazing. That was fun. It got really annoying, though, and even the people watched it, because every time I said Karate Island, I had to say it like, <coughs> Karate Island! And so I say, Karate Island, about 50 damn times in that video. Uh, she's 8 foot 8, so you're wrong, sir! You're wrong! But yeah, sure, why not? 8 foot 8? Yeah, okay. Nine feet is just excessive, but eight foot eight, that's four inches shorter. You're fine. Uh, do Naruto Hokage, do the Naruto Hokage videos. I was actually thinking, you know what? I was looking this up on YouTube the other day. I don't think there's ever been a YouTuber that's actually like 
made separate videos for like, here are all the Suchi Kages, here are all the Kaze Kages, here are all the Ho Kages. Maybe the Ho Kages video. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm just gonna type into YouTube all Suchi Kage. See, we don't have one. We have all the Kages in Naruto. Like they just kind of rank them on like a tier list. And then there's a video on um, Kuro Tsuchi, who is the the fourth Suchi Kage, Suchi Kage after Onoki. But there's never a video about all of them. Now, if I type in all Hokage, that'll probably have a video or two. Uh, just because of them being, like, the most notable one. Yeah, so Anime Uproar did a video about that. Like, all seven Hokage. But even then, there's not that many of them. Anime Uproar also did a video on every single Kage, but I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, like, every Kage in one video. I'm talking about five separate videos where, like, all the Kages from the separate villages. I might do that. I might do that. I don't know. I might do that. I might do that. I maybe might do that. I don't know. <laughs> Will you do Bleach episode reviews for anime only? I don't know if I'm going to do episode by episode. Like, I'm not going to do reviews. I'm going to do a podcast style format, but I don't know if I'm going to do one like every week. Like every episode, I'm going to do a new um, podcast. It might be like every other week. So it might be like we cover two episodes per podcast, something like that. What do you think would happen? Would happen if someone were to eat two devil fruits, one consisting of the yomi yomi and one of the other, other uh, one of the other fruit? I think you would just die, uh, and you would probably come back with the yomi yomi, but you wouldn't get the other fruit. For the next SBS, Oda should start drawing the supernovas at age forty and sixty. I'd be down with that. That'd be cool. Just do it. No content is bad content. All right, so I'm gonna change the whole basis of this channel to uh, discussing window installation. And I don't know anything about window installations, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to make the whole series, make the whole channel about that now. Um, what do you think happened to Goku when that electricity went around him after hearing Bardock? Oh, he was just remembering, it was just like a shock moment. It was just like his brain, like, unlocked a moment. That wasn't, I don't think it was like he was actually getting electrically shocked or anything. It was just like a, whoa, I remembered my dad all of a sudden. Like, you remembered, like, a memory that he had, like, locked away. Because he heard the voice of his father for the first time. That's, that's what that was, yeah. At least I assume. Um, I would watch at least one window installation video. Well, that's good to know. I at least got one of them. Ah, uh, yes, the window phase of teching. Yeah, it's the medieval phase, and then the bleach phase, and then the boob phase, and then the one piece phase, and then uh, the uh, the isekai phase, and now we're here. Uh, yeah. Uh, when will the Kaido arc end? When will the Kaido arc end? When will the Kaido arc end? I'm going to time you out because you keep spamming, but, you know, uh, I would say in the next maybe uh, five or six chapters. You skipped my super yeah, super chat question. Well, it's a good thing I have that all on standby, so that's handy. Let me just refresh that page, and we'll be good. Uh, let's see here. I skipped a few of them because I can't answer everyone at once, but here we are. Aaron donated a dollar but didn't leave a question, so thank you, Aaron. Um, Storm Fox, I still hate that you can just wish to be the strongest in the universe with the Dragon Balls. Why didn't anyone ever try that before? Better question with that is Granola, like, wishing to be the strongest in the universe, and the dragon is like, I can't do that because, you know, that's beyond my power. But he's like, oh, what I can do is I can compress your lifespan so you could have all the strength in your life compressed down so you only live, like, a few years. And Granola is like, okay. And that makes him stronger than, like, or on par with Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta. Get the fuck out of here. I don't care. You know, it's like, I don't care if you compress his lifespan so he only lives like a minute after he makes the wish. Like, that's kind of broken that anybody could do that. So, I mean, I like that they're exploring the idea finally, but this is something that should have been explored like arcs ago. Not like at the point where Goku and Vegeta have like god powers and it's like someone can just wish to have comparable levels to that. No. Hmm. All right. So here's the one I skipped. One of the ones I skipped. Hey, Teching, where do you think Eneru would rank power-wise if he ever came back? Assuming he knows high-level hockey. Assuming he knows. We don't know if he knows that. You know, he has observation, but, you know, we don't know armament. Um, why, uh, uh, assuming he knows high-level hockey, you think he's about admiral level? No, Eneru is not admiral level. 
I don't even know if I don't even know if Enaru is interested in like training. I don't I don't know if he is. He might just be up on the moon, just be like, yeah, I'm just chilling out on the moon with my army of robots. He might not be training at all. Now, if he went and goes and trains for two years and was getting really, really powerful, um, I don't know. Maybe he could take on an admiral. He could learn armament hockey. He would be devastating. But Oda even mentioned uh, pre-time skip, if Enaru was a pirate on the Blue Sea, he would have a bounty of $500 million, which was a big deal back then because that was a higher bounty than Luffy had at that point. Um, this was like Eni's lobby that Oda dropped this information. But he also said that Enaru, you know, there's so many strong characters in the Blue Sea, Enaru would not rule the Blue Sea. He would not be the strongest. I think um, Oda was referring to the Yonko being stronger than him and possibly also the Admirals. Um, what if Dr. Vegapunk made a serum? I already answered that one, kind of. Uh, that would suck if he invented that, but I don't think he did. Uh, saw a super chat from you from an old DP episode. Wait, what? From an old DP episode from in 1998 when The Undertaker threw mankind off hell in the cell and threw the Spanish announcer table. You got me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> good job. Good job. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. Anyone that watched Drunken Peasants back in the day, um, that that's uh, that's a meme that lives on. I'm glad that that still continues. Yeah. Drunken Peasants was a po It still is a podcast. I don't watch it anymore. But back in like, 2015 2016 i watched that quite a bit i would always i had a routine i would uh, work at dollar tree i'd be working the night shift and then i'd uh get off the night shift and then go get a sandwich at this uh, uh get go which is like a convenience store i get a sandwich from there or a burger or something and then i would drive home and then i would watch drunken peasants because they broadcast like three times a week they did this podcast and uh, probably like 2015, 2016 was when I was having the most of them. I even sent them fan mail once. That was that was a fun that was a fun time. But that was that was where years passed. It was back in like 2015, I think 2016. So seven years. Holy shit. Getting old, guys. I'm gonna be 30 soon. I'm, I'm gonna be 29 in about a month. Oh boy. I am watching JJK right now. I actually got to reread this because it's been a few months since I've read this. I just want to reread it really quick just to get the gist of what it's about. And then uh, I'll probably go watch the movie tonight. Uh, should I see it in English dub or should I see it in the original? Because the English dub is at like 5 o'clock and that's kind of early. And the uh, the uh, there's three more showings at like 7.30, 8 o'clock, but they're all in the sub. I don't care either way, but I don't know. Uh, don't call yourself old. That makes me feel old. We're all old. <laughs> Could we see Sun God Luffy versus Moon God Enaru? Ooh, that'd be cool. I would love to see them just fight again. That'd be neat. Original Japanese sub sub dub. What happened to the Pokemon streams? Eh, what happened to anything? They'll probably go back at some point. They'll probably come back. Um, have I read Sun Ken Rock? No, I haven't. But I know that's um. Uh, okay, I know one of, okay, Inagaki and Boichi both worked on series before Dr. Stone. One of them was Eye Shield 21, and one of them was Sun Ken Rock. I think Sun Ken Rock was the one Boichi drew before Dr. Stone, and Eye Shield 21 was the one Inagaki wrote before Dr. Stone, but I, I get them mixed up sometimes. Uh, does Barry have any family that we don't know about? Of course he does. He's a whole family of bricks. You know, they're all they're all hanging out. It's just that, you know, he hasn't seen them in quite some time. Um let's see. Dub JJK Zero is good. Uh, do you still do movie watch alongs? No, I don't do those anymore because um the website I used to do them off of was called Ustream, and Ustream did not give a shit about me broadcasting like movies, like full length movies and doing like watch alongs. They didn't care. Uh, YouTube would care about that, and most other websites would care. There are a few websites where you can watch stuff along with people. Um, there was one called, like, Rabbit or something, uh, but there was, like, an upper limit of how many people you could have in the chat. There was only, like, 20 or 30 people. I haven't really found a streaming website that just, you know, you could just stream it, like, normal, like this, through, like, XSplit, and you could just watch it with whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ustream is still a thing, but they rebranded, so now they're, like, a... Um, they're like a business streaming service, like for big corporations. So you have to pay for their service. And it's like you pay for like a thousand dollars a month to get free, you know, streaming services. So it's intended for like big corporations and companies to buy their service and use it. Not like random, like not like people like me. So, yeah, I don't know. It was fun. 
Uh, do I ever read any Seinen, like Berserk? I've only read a little bit of Berserk. The, the Seinen I've probably read uh, the most is probably Gantz um, and the other variations of Gantz. Like, there's a sequel series to Gantz or a prequel right now that takes place during, like, Edo period Japan. So I've been reading that. Um, Drifters, Helsing, those are big Seinens. Uh, Inu Yashiki, uh, loved Inu Yashiki. Yeah, so there, there's a bunch. There's a few Seinens I've seen. Oh, Kingdom, yeah, I've read Kingdom. Only up to, like, chapter 200 or so, but I've read Kingdom. Gantz is so good. Yeah, I really wish still... I mean, Gantz had a good... Um, this is actually a good transition to talk about Fooly Cooly. Because Fooly Cooly was announced to have two new seasons coming out. Again. So they did alternate and progressive during 2018. And I was so excited about that. And it's so weird. Because I was just re-watching the original Fooly Cooly the other nights. Just on a whim. And then the next day, they're like, two more Fooly Cooly seasons have been announced. I'm like, it's called, uh, Grunge, and, like, there was another one that had, like, Shoe in the title. It was so weird. Hold on, let me pull this up. I retweeted it. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Here they are. Okay. Uh, new Fooly Cooly seasons. Fooly Cooly Grunge which is in, like, a 3D animation style, and Fooly Cooly Shoegaze. S-H-O-E-G-A-Z-E. -E. Shoegaze. You stare at your shoes. <laughs> I don't know how to... I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, and I love Fooly Cooly. I've said this before. Fooly Cooly is my favorite anime. Uh, just for purely nostalgic reasons, I watched it when I was like 12, 13 years old. Um, I was a, a big fan. It really opened the door of like what like anime could be. Because up until that point, all I was really watching in terms of anime was like, you know, shonen stuff. You know, like so Dragon Ball. I don't think Naruto was out in the States yet, but it was right about to come. No, yeah, it was. It was. Naruto came out in 05. I watched Fooly Cooly in 06 when I was 13. So, Naruto, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Dragon Ball, you know, those are the kind of animes I was watching at the time, and that's, like, all I thought, like, anime could be. And uh, even One Piece, the four kids dub, I was watching that. Um, wasn't quite into Bleach yet. I didn't get into Bleach until the following year. But, uh, Fooly Cooly, I watched that, and I watched it, I, I ended up getting, uh, getting it, like, recorded on a VHS tape by accident, I ended up watching it, and I was just like, it just blew my mind, man. Because uh, the whole point of the series is, like, an, an, a kid, Nalta, who's, like, 12 years old, and it's, like, a coming-of-age story, and it's, like, all these weird things are going on in your life, you know, you're like, girls and things, and it's just, like, you don't know how to handle it, and it is sort of compressed down into this six-episode OVA where all this weird shit's going on in this kid's life, and I was, like, 13 years old when I watched it, and I was just like, whoa, this is, like, so relevant, you know? So it was a big deal for me. Shoegaze is a genre of music. Okay, well, that answers one question. Still, I need to listen to that kind of music now. Uh, they'll probably bring back The Pillows. Uh, that got me into The Pillows, which is an, an amazing band that I still listen to. Uh, I was just listening to them last night, actually. Shanks' age doesn't match in the flashbacks. No, it does. I've checked into this. Is the Awakened Barry under the chat? Yes. Yes. Uh, did I watch Monster? No. What if Zoro became a Marine? That would be a fun video. I did a what if video on what if Luffy became a Marine. Well, what if Zoro became a Marine? I might do a video on that, Obi. I might do a video on that. I don't know. I'll give you credit if I do, but I might make a video about that. Really opened the doors for you. For you. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And then, so, uh, you can imagine, because, like, it was just intended to be a six-episode OVA. It was never intended to be, like, a long-running series. In fact, I think Gynax just made it so they could test out some new animation techniques and, like, 3D modeling. And they're like, we need some anime to test this out. And I'm like, okay, here's this uh, uh, six-episode OVA where we have this. And uh, that was it. And I loved it. But I'm like, okay, now what? Like, cause like, that's all there is. And I read like some fan fictions about Fooly Cooly over the years and stuff. Like that's all we were going to get. Um, but then years, years later, they came out with, because it was so popular in the States, Adult Swim like ordered some new like uh, episodes. So that's when we got progressive and alternate, uh, alternative in um, 2018. And I really liked, 
I liked alternate better than progressive. I was a little upset because progressive, I thought, was going to... Because they announced this beforehand. They said progressive is going to take place, like, in the same timeline as the original Fooly Cooly, like, in the future. And I was expecting, like, Nauta and Mamimi and everybody to be in, and Conti, to be in progressive, like, grown up. And then it was also mentioned alternate was going to be taking place in another, like, timeline. And I'm like, okay, so we're getting two different, like, that's cool. So I, I really wasn't a huge fan of Progressive. I still liked it, but, like, I was just upset because the cast from the first Fooly Cooly, this was supposed to take place in the future, but they don't really show up. They show up in the ending. Um, that's it. They show up in, like, the ending credits and, like, the background and, like, that's it. And I'm just like, man, I, I was expecting Nauta to show up to be, like, an adult or something, you know? And, like, that was going to be something. We see Amarao's, like, son, and that's, like, it. And it's, like, okay, now Haruko is there, and she's, like, the star of the show, but that was it. Um, and then Alternate I liked because it had, it was more of, like, the original feel of Fooly Cooly, except instead of a, a, a boy being the main character, it was a girl being the main character. And so I'm like, okay, this sort of fits in with the same sort of um, themes that the original Fooly Cooly did just for a different uh, gender. So I'm like, okay, that, that works. Um, and the ending of Progressive, I mean, the ending of Alternate was way better than Progressive. So yeah, um, that was my opinion on that. But with Grunge coming out and then Shoe Gaze coming out, um, I don't know. I don't know. Grunge is going to have this 3D style. And I'm not sure how I feel about that, but at the same time, uh, like I said about Gantz, Gantz did a whole movie that was like 3D CGI, and it worked. And I really liked that one with the Osaka mission. So this could work. And, and Shoemaker seems to be in, not Shoemaker, Shoe Gaze. Uh, Shoe Gaze seems to be in the, um, the original, like just an anime kind of style. Yeah. Are you excited for One Piece Film Red? I am. And uh, it's not long for it to come out. August is when it's coming out, so we only have, like, two, three, four, like, five months. Less than that. It'll be out. It'll be fun. I'll go see it, make a video about it. Should be good. I just can't get my eyes off Barry. Story of my life, man. Nobody can get their eyes off of Barry. He's the, he's the cornerstone of this whole operation, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh... GG to Mr. Morge. Why? Oh, because of the raid failing thing. I I don't think the raid will fail, but we're still it's still debatable. We don't know how this is going to end, so I can't say anything until, you know, the arc is over. Um, um imagine if Moria comes to Wano to make his final stand. That would be a great climax for Moria. It would be. I just don't think that Moria is going to be involved there. Um Unless like Blackbeard orders him to do it and he has to do it, like he's forced to, he doesn't have an uh, he doesn't have a chance. Like, what if Perona is like captured by Blackbeard or something, and so Moria's it was stated to be like the fatherly figure to Perona. So what if he's like, I already lost Absalom, I can't lose you too, and then he goes and does whatever Blackbeard tells him to do. Maybe, maybe. Um, chapter one thousand fifty, Zoro gets his black blade. I I would say I'm more excited for uh Zoro to get his black blade during Wano rather than after Wano. I did a I did a video uh well a collab with uh Rogers Base and some other YouTubers. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it because it's going to be out tomorrow. They're going to put it out on Sunday because we're not getting a One Piece chapter tomorrow. So we filmed this like little discussion with like a few YouTubers. Some new faces are in there. You'll you'll enjoy it. It was a fun discussion. We went for about 2 hours. Um and so that'll be up uh, tomorrow on Roger's channel, and I'll retweet that when it comes out. Um, but yeah, look forward to that. So there is some content tomorrow, despite there not being a review. There'll still be a discussion with all of us in there. But I don't know how much I'm supposed to say about that video, so I'll uh, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was two hours. It might have been an hour and a half or two hours, something like that, yeah. Please link it with your channel. Yeah, I'll put it up on uh, Twitter, and I'll also do a community post about it, which I'm starting to do community posts a lot more. I think I finally found a rhythm with the community posts, and it's when I put stuff up on my side channel. So I've started, if anybody noticed, I've started to kind of uh, put up some videos and stuff on my side channel, like not vlogs, but like actual content, um, basically doing like a series that I don't normally discuss on the main channel that aren't big on the main channel. So, like, with the main channel, we have One Piece and we have Bleach. 
Uh, both of those series, when I put out those videos, they still get pretty good views. Um, I feel like with Bleach coming back and with the audience that I initially had with this channel for like five years, that's all I talked about was Bleach. Um, if I put a Bleach video up on this channel, it's like if I put it out on the channel, Bleach fans will come, you know, sort of situation. Like they will watch the video. I did a video on Orihime's powers not too long ago, and it got about like decent views. It got like 80,000. It got like what normally I would get for like a One Piece video. So that's pretty good. And then obviously the One Piece stuff is the main draw. Um, I'm, I'm still debating on My Hero Academia. I don't know because My Hero Academia does tend to get lower views on this channel. Maybe I can move the My Hero Academia stuff to the side channel and then that stuff can be sort of like, it, it'll be like on this channel, it's sort of like the, like the I don't know how to put it, like, the lowest build thing. But on the other channel, I think it would be, like, the most popular thing. So I have to sort of balance it out there. Yeah. Um, and I would still put it out on, like, the main channel, like, on the community post. Like, here's a new video on the side channel. Go check it out. Um, and the reason I'm doing that, um, well, for one thing, Liam, you know, Grand Line Review made a video recommending that, that I do that back in January. Um, and I, I thought about that, and there was a lot of people that were like, don't change teching, and I'm like, eh, I'll see what, I, I'll see what happens. But w basically what it is, is uh, so, you know, on YouTube, you have like, you have moments where you do really well, and then moments where you're in a lull. And it's sort of like this, like that's sort of YouTube, okay? At least it, it, it's been for my channel for years and years and years. Maybe there's other channels that just experience nothing but success. You know, I'm sure there had to have been. But with my channel, ever since the beginning, pretty much, it's always been a roller coaster routine, right? Um, well, you know, I was in, my channel was in a little bit of a lull the last few months uh, where my subscriber rate was going down, view rate was a little down. And um, I was just like, well, that's what it is, you know, it, whatever, you know. Um, so typically my channel when it was at its peak was, um, I think 13,000, 14,000 subscribers a month. I think that was the most a month I've ever made. Um, and it was actually in 2019, right after I did a collaboration with Nux Taku. Me and Nux did like the, all the arcs at the beginning of One Piece. And then my subscribers just shot through the roof for like three or four months. Um, okay. I think that was the highest it's ever been. Um, but it's never been that mo mu that much ever again. So usually it would go down like 10k a month. I'm like, okay, 10k a month is pretty good. And then it would go down to like 8k a month, and I'd be like, all right, 8,000, that's not too bad. And then like the last few months, it's like like last year, it was mainly like 6,000 a month to 8,000 a month, like 6,000 at the worst, 8,000 at the most. And I'm like, I was okay with that. I was happy with that. Well, the last couple of months, um. I would say from, like, November to, like, February, it's it was dipping a lot. It was, like, 5,000, and then 4,000, and then 3,000, and, like, I think 2,500 is where it stopped at. Now, that's still good. I'm not, like, hemorrhaging subscribers. I'm not, like, losing subscribers in the negative. That would be a concern. Um, but it was the lowest it's been for a very long time. And I was like, okay, well, how about this? Um, now, so... With the new One Piece chapter, with everything going on with Luffy and Joy Boy and the big revelations and everything and the Awakening, and so I made my videos about that, and my subscribers started to go back up again, and then I wanted to make the Dr. Stone video. And that, 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 yeah, that Dr. Stone video was the first video I put up on the side channel. And I had to think about that, because I'm like, okay... My channel was not doing, like, in terms of subscribers and views, it was kind of down for a while, and now it's just starting to go back up. If I make this Dr. Stone video, is that going to shoot it in the foot? Is that going to knock it back down again? So I'm like, I want to just not do that, like, not take a risk like that right as I'm starting to go back up, you know? So I put it up on the side channel, and it actually did very well on the side channel. And I put my Yu-Gi-Oh channel up on um, the Yu-Gi-Oh video up on that, and it did it did okay. It didn't do great, but I don't think it would do much better on my main channel. Is the point? Um, you know, the Doctor Stone video got like twenty thousand views, and it would probably get that much on the main channel. The Yu-Gi-Oh video also probably wouldn't got that many views on my main channel. Um, 
You know, Dr. Stone is pretty mid. I like it, but I can understand that sentiment. I can understand that not as many people talk about it or read it than, like, One Piece, Bleach, Naruto. Um, it certainly was not, like, big three material, but I really loved it. I really loved that series. It was more of, like, a passion thing to talk about that. Um, but yeah, so that's the reason why I'm putting stuff up on the other channel. I'm still debating between My Hero Academia. Um, I do want to make a video about My Hero because it's been a while. Um, I might just put it up on the side channel, see how it does there, and then if it all works out. Uh, but right now, my channel, the main channel is doing better. It's at like, it's about about 5,000 subs right now. We're going back up, so we're right about getting to where we need to be. Best case scenario, it would be cool to get up to like 10k again, but I'm not holding out hope for that. We'll see what happens. Um, and it would also be fun, I mean like... And it would be cool to get to the the vlog channel to 100k, like because I've had the vlog channel for like almost 10 years now. Like that would that would be cool to get that to 100k, so I could get another play button. That would be fun. Eh, we'll see where it goes. Anyway, let's read through. Ah, eh, let's read through some super chats. Super chat from Russian assassin. That's a troubling username given recent events. Um. The jackfruit could be deadly if the user could trick or have someone forcefully have the... Oh, the jacket fruit. I was like, the jackfruit? You eat it, you turn into jack? <laughs> you know? Um, forcefully have the jacket places on, on a high political member. Yeah, I could see that if it was like um, like an awakened jacket fruit where you could turn the world into jackets and you could like make somebody wear it and get their powers. That would be more useful than what it is. Um, I remember waiting five months for the final Bountark episode. I want to do, when I start doing the Bleach podcast, Bongcast, I want to do an episode on all the arcs leading up to the final arc, and I do want to talk about the Bountark, because I have rewatched it recently. It's not as bad as really people think it is. It actually has some good stuff going for it. Uh, will Law use the Op-Op fruit powers to gain, uh, to, for, for Luffy to get Eternal Youth? Or who will Law use this power on? I don't believe Oda gave us the Op-Op fruit and to never use it. Well, you know, you gotta look at it like this. It would be one thing for, I mean, like, if Odin never utilizes that power, like, if Law never uses the immortal surgery, I would be okay with that, because Law does not want to die, you know? He's like, I could do it. I think the power is in, like, I could do this, I could use the eternal youth operation on somebody, but I would die in the process. I think Law making the choice to not do that is also significant in the story. Um... But there's been a lot of theories on whether or not maybe, like, Kaido had the immortal surgery performed on him by, like, a, a former user. Uh, maybe Dr. Kureha had it performed on her. Um, maybe, uh, you know, Law might use it on Luffy to save his life, sacrificing his own life in the process. I don't want Law to die so Luffy could live. I don't want that exchange. I really don't. Um, <laughs> this is so mean. If I had to choose between Luffy and Law dying, I think I would pick Luffy. <laughs> this is so mean, but if I had to choose between one, like, either Luffy dies or Law dies, I'd be like, and whoever survives is the new main character of One Piece. I'd be like, um, <laughs> I know Luffy's the main character and all, but... Law has the poofy hat. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, like there it is. Like, same. Let's get real now, ladies and gentlemen. If you had to choose. <laughs> oh, my God. This is going to start an argument. You know, Luffy's dead. <laughs> wow. Hot take right there. Hey, teching. Big fan. All right. Yeah. I sure as hell subscribe there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Law for the win. Who wouldn't choose Law? Law is so much better. Um, you know, preemptive RIP for Law. Yeah, I hope it's not just like Oda setting it up. Like, this is the mechanism for which Law is going to die. I would I would hope that's not the, uh, not the case. Because, you know, Oda could have established the eternal youth thing, not for Law to use it, but giving precedence that it's been used before. So there may very well be some immortal beings walking around the planet right now. Like... That might have been the reason why Oda said that. Not so like, oh, you know, the reason that, you know, the Op-Op fruit has this power is so Law can use it one day. No, that's not the reason. It's like, it's been used before, though, you know? That would make, that would make perfect sense. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. How do you guys feel about that one? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this one is from Speed Shoes 29 what is the language of the One Piece world? Everybody seems to speak it. Language is considered part of human geography, which is geography is everything. I, 
think of it like common in D and D. You know how like D and D, you're in this fantasy world with all these different races, all these different people from different parts of the world. Some people are from extra dimensional realms and from hell and from heaven and stuff like that. And yet, there's just one universal language called common, and just everybody speaks it. Now there are other languages like Sylphin, like Undercommon, like uh, Draconic and uh, Abyssal. Gnomish, the gnomes have a language, Dwarvish, the giants have a language, um, the orcs have a very rudimentary language, but there's one language that's like just the universal language. And the reason that exists is to make storytelling simpler, if you just want me to say it. That's the reason. Because it's like no matter what island the Straw Hats go to, they don't have to worry about a language barrier they can just speak the language, okay? It does cause some problems, like, how does everybody on this planet learn this exact language in the exact same way? It doesn't make any sense. It's fiction. Just go with it. You know what I mean? Like, in Bleach, you have the living world, but then you have the Shinigami that apparently live in feudal Japan, but they still speak the same as, like, modern Japanese. Then in Hueco Mundo, apparently they speak Spanish, but they still also speak Japanese, you know, and English as well. The, the Quincy's apparently are from a German motif, so they speak German, but they also speak English and Japanese. Just just go with it, you know. It's suspension of disbelief, yeah. Lucky Berlin, which Power Rangers series and opening do you like? I think Turbo is my favorite. <laughs> Turbo's action. No, it's Operation Overdrive. Operation Overdrive. Power Rangers. Operation Overdrive. I think that's actually one of the worst ones. But, um, yeah, Zeo is fucking such a banger. I love it, <laughs> you know? Um, it's just the energy, you know, it's like the idea, like, the Power Rangers were at, like, their lowest at the end of Mighty Morphin, and then they got these new powers that are, that are, like, better than before, and it's like the changing of the guard, where it's like, okay, those old powers that you had for three years are gone forever, they're never coming back, but it's okay, because we have these new Zeo powers. I love the Zeo suits. I love the, like, um, intricacy, the, the intricacies, like, the circuit boards on them and the shapes. I think it's so simple, but it works. Um, I just love that season. It's great. Freaking uh, Austin St. John coming back as Jason for the Gold Ranger. The Gold Ranger is, like, next to Zane, probably my favorite, like, Ranger ever. Oh, my God. By the way, with this stream, I should mention at this point, um, I'm doing the stream on my main channel, but I think I'm going to put this up on the side. I don't think I'm going to keep this stream on the main channel. Now, when I do, the exception of that will be fan mail videos because people send me fan mail to open on the main channel. So I'll be doing fan mail videos on the main channel still. I'll be doing those. But um, w with these, I think I'll be like like streaming them on the main channel, putting up the VOD on the side channel. I'll most likely be doing that. So we'll look forward to that. Oh, man. That was so cool, though. That was good. That was a good Zio dance number. So I actually didn't watch Zio. I was too young when Zio came out. I was, um, Power Rangers started in 93. I was the year I was born, actually. So Power Rangers started the year I was born. Obviously, I was a baby, so I couldn't watch it back then. But um, Zio came out in 97. Wait, hold on. 93, 94, 95, 96, 96. O Ranger was 95, and that's what it's based on. So, 96, I was three years old. I didn't watch, you know, Power Rangers. I didn't watch Power Rangers until halfway through In Space. I was like five years old when In Space was airing. Like, halfway through that, I started watching Power Rangers. And In Space is a really good intro, too. Um, but Zio is my favorite. God, I love Power Rangers. Oh, okay. Uh, that was, uh, but anyway, that's the answer to your question, Lucky Berlin. Uh, <laughs> Hi, from Nebraska. How is recruitment for the Sun Hat Pirates? Can I join? I like plants. Sure, you're the official... Uh, oh, and Amanda. Hi, Anna Amanda. Yeah, you could be the official botanist for the crew. Uh, how does Burn the Witch fit with Bleach? It's in the same universe, just in a different location. It's in the West rather than Bleach with Japan and uh, the Soul Society being in the East. So that's the only difference. Uh, when will your next fan mail stream be? I'm extremely excited to watch you open my gift to you. Uh, I'm looking at them right now. I can assume what they are. Um, I try to do them on the first Wednesday of every month, but I kind of already messed that up for this month. The last one I did was, I think, I think I did it on March 1st. 
So I'll probably just wait. I have a little bit of fan mail. I have a few boxes, but that's all. I don't think I have one for a full fan mail video yet. But I'll definitely do one in April, regardless of if, if, if I get more or if I don't get more. I'll do one a month. So, yeah, I'll try to do one the first week of April. So maybe like three weeks from now. Yeah, we'll aim for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we need a swordsman? Yeah, we need all the swordsmen. The Sun Hat Pirates? Are you kidding? We're going to have like 17,000 swordsmen on this crew. Uh, I have recently awakened to Conqueror's Hockey. Will you join my crew as first mate? I'm sorry, I'm already... I'm the captain of the Sun Hat Pirates. I'm sorry, man. Uh... What do you think about the Straw Hats using Zunisha to invade Marijua from above, like when Luffy entered Marineford? Um, I don't think Zunisha's... Wait. It is so absurd how how tall Zunisha is. Like, it really is. Like, Zunisha was mentioned to be 35 kilometers tall, right? But even if you want to say that's, like, the full body of the elephant and part of it's submerged underwater... So from surface level to Fishman Island, we've already established that's 10,000 meters. And that's not even the normal ocean floor. That's 10,000 meters down like a trench, okay? I think the normal ocean floor is only like 7,000 meters down or whatever, but whatever. Let's say it's 10,000. That means that Zunisha is 25 kilometers above sea level. So way above the Sky Island and the White White Sea and Skypea and everything like that. Like, 10,000 meters higher than that. And it's absurd how tall that elephant is. And I don't even know if Oda's been consistent with how tall it is, but maybe. Mystic Forest had a pretty good opening as well. Uh, just the very mysterious opening to it. It's like, do-do-do-do. Here come the Power Rangers. Here come the Power Rangers. Yeah, but what did I think of Power Rangers Samurai? I liked the opening, although at that point I was, like, in high school when Samurai came out, and I was really not into Power Rangers at that point um, anymore. <laughs> the last season I remember watching part of it, I didn't even watch the whole thing, was Dino Thunder when I was, like, 11. Uh, let's see. Do you think we're going to get a massive Void Century info dump after the raid is over? And what, and what do you think might finally be revealed? Um... Let's see. I think we're definitely going to get a dump about... <laughs> we're definitely going to get a dump, guys. We're going to get an info dump, sure. I don't know if it's going to be revealing a bunch of crap about the Void Century, per se. I mean, we might find a little bit more, like, hints about it. But the big info dump for the Void Century, that's going to be when they find the Rioponic Glyph and Robin actually reads off what it is. Um, that'll be that. But we're definitely going to find out a little bit more about uh, Joy Boy, the Sun God, all that kind of stuff. Um, if the One Piece was the best weed ever, Kizaru would find it in 10 minutes. That is true. That is true. He would. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it would have been interesting if Granola's lifespan was condensed into one minute the whole arc and 60 seconds long with each chapter being three seconds of time. That is something that Dragon Ball could do, though. Uh, that's cool. 40, oh, Warhammer minis. That's neat. I think these are the older chats from the previous stream I did. But this super chat video doesn't do a great job with... Oh, no, no, no. This is still the... It's still... See, that's the thing. The super chat log will say, like, these comments are from March 1st. Even though they were just... Like, I just read these ones today. Uh, you know Pluton was already in a One Piece movie. Um, which One Piece movie? Are you talking about the endpoints or whatever? It wasn't, like, an actual thing. That was just, like, movie stuff. You know, it might be similar, but I don't think... I think Oda's having a different idea with it. They might even do the thing where, like, all the ancient weapons might not even be weapons. They might be, like, people. You know, like, maybe, you know, Shirahoshi's obviously Poseidon, but maybe that, you know, Pluton... I want to think Pluton's a battleship, but it might be something else. Who knows? Um, Have I played Elden Ring? Yeah, I played it for, like, a couple hours. I really liked it. I just got away from it. Because I went on vacation right after I started playing Elden Ring. And uh, I haven't gotten back to it since I've gotten back. Who would win in an arm wrestling? Prim uh, prime Garp or Prime Whitebeard? Arm wrestling? Um, I would probably put money on Garp there. Just because Garp is like known as like Garp the Fist. 
and he's trained probably physically a little bit because Whitebeard had a Devil Fruit, so maybe he focused a little bit of his training more on his Devil Fruit, and Garp is just all about the strength. So I, 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 it would be an epic fight. I mean, it would destroy whatever surface they were arm wrestling on, and it would cause like a rift in the sky, but I, I think Garp might come out ahead of that. Um, how's life? Life's good. Life's okay. It's very nice out. I'm going to go for a walk after this. Um, let's see. I think I answered all these ones. Yeah, SpongeBob characters in real life. Yeah. Elden Ring is fun but hard. Yes, I've noticed. I have noticed. I didn't know how to attack properly for the first hour I played it. I thought the only way to attack was using the heavy attack, like the uh, like like jumping up and attack. I didn't know there was a quicker attack function, and I got killed a lot. And then I learned about it, and then I still got killed a lot. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have I tried Prime? I don't know what that is. Like, Amazon Prime? I've used Amazon Prime. I just used it to get some new DVDs the other day. I'm watching, I'm watching Angel now. So I finished Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That took about four and a half months, but I finally got finished with Buffy. And now I'm, uh, starting to watch Angel. So, yeah, I watched, I just watched a few episodes this morning, actually. So, yeah, that's something to just kill time. Are you enjoying the new season of Attack on Titan? And do you think that there could be any anime only? So I've actually haven't only, I've only watched the first episode of Attack on Titan of the new season of the last part. I'm just going to wait for it's over and then watch the whole thing. I might actually just wait until it's over and then start up from season four at the very beginning and just watch the whole thing all straight through. Uh, but I haven't been watching them week by week. I've been promoted to Admiral and I will now have to take you in. Oh no. Well, I'm a fleet Admiral. So, ha. Huh? And Barry's the Pan Fleet Admiral. Remember back when uh, it was like a translation error when Kong was first introduced? His title was like uh, like Commander in Chief of like the World Government Forces, but the first translation was not the Fleet Admiral. It was the Pan Fleet Admiral, and it was so funny. It was like he's the Fleet Admiral of cookware, you know? Oh yeah, fun translation days. Uh, my, my, another one that was really fun is when Kata Curry was first introduced, he was called Charlotte Dogtooth. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Kata Curry works better. Okay. Uh, well, you do a video about your D&D &D fruit. Uh, oh, the, um, roulette, roulette, no me. Um, I don't know, maybe. Might do that. Logan Paul and KSI Prime Drink. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't watch either of those people. I'm not into the um, drama side of YouTube. Never really was interested in it too much. How many new members will join Luffy? I would go with Yamato and Carrot would be my choices, but whatever, probably Carrot uh, would not join. So let's just go with Yamato. Um, yeah, I think I think if, if Carrot's not going to join, I think it's just Yamato at the end of this arc. And Jinbei officially, I guess, did join during this arc. Quick quick power scaling question. Oh, boy. These are always fun. Uh, can Zoro beat Fujitora or Green Bull now that he has advanced conquerors? This is assuming the two-thirds OG admirals have the same. We didn't even really get to see a full battle between Zoro and Fujitora, like them both going at each other like with full power. Um, I would say Zoro definitely has some new attacks and things in his arsenal right now. I don't know if he has complete control over Enma, though. Um, he knows how to use its power in a new way, but he still might have to train with it a little bit more. Um, but then again, I don't know. I don't know the whole backstory of Fujitora. I don't know if like Fujitora was like training out in the mountains for most of his life with the Zushi Zushi no Mi and with his sword play. And now he's been like, he's super advanced or if he did not get the gravity fruit until after he joined the Marines. I don't know. I'd have to know that information. That's why I'm not a great power scaler. Cause I'm like, well, we don't know everything about these characters. <laughs> so I don't do that. Uh, I, I've done a few, but yeah. Teching is so heavy on copium, he'd fail a drunkness test. Oh, sure, fine. I don't know what copium is. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if that was a joke or if that's an actual drug. I have no idea. Dadan versus Makino. Who would win? Uh, probably Makino. Yeah. Um, any chapter spoilers? None are out yet. And even if they were, I would not say what the spoilers were, but I do check. I think probably Monday. 
Monday at earliest, I'd say maybe Tuesday, Wednesday would be more appropriate if you want to if you want to check out the One Piece Reddit. That's where I read the spoilers. They're there. Uh, one part because I want to prepare for the review, and uh, the other part is I'm very impatient. Can you rename Zoro's swords? Ridiculous answer only. Um, let's see. Uh, dead best friend. Um. I'm trying to think of other clever ones, like, for, for uh, Yubashiri that, like, got destroyed. You know, Rust Bane or something like that, but that's too cool. Um, you know, Pile of Junk. Uh, I don't know. You know, Shitty Little Brother, just because the Sandai Kotetsu is, like, the third in line. So it's, like, the Shitty Little Brother of the Kotetsu Swords. Um, and then the Shusui would be, I don't know... Uh, you know, mummy, because it's just it's because uh, Ryuma was a mummy. I don't know, Rusty. Let's just call let's just call um Yubashiri Rusty. That's a good one. Who would win, Katakuri or Akainu? I would say Akainu. Yeah, King and Kata. Oh, King versus Katakuri and wait. Oh, King and Katakuri together versus Akainu. Okay, gotcha. I would probably give the edge to King and Katakuri. If they, like, work together, if it was like they planned the... How much prep time do they get? That's another question you gotta ask. Like, is prep time a thing? Or is it just like they show up and they're just gonna fight Akainu? You know? But if they had time to plan this and be, like, work together and come up with, like, combination attacks and they catch Akainu by surprise, I would say they would probably win, yeah. I'd say so. Uh, what... Who do you think in the Marines has Conqueror's Hockey? And if the Admirals have Advanced Conqueror's Hockey? I think all the Admirals have Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. Um, all of them. But when it comes to... It's kind of like in order to be a Vice Admiral, you have to have Hockey. And when you become an Admiral, like the, one of the requirements is you have to have like Advanced Observation or Advanced Armament or Conquerors or something else going on here. Um, do you think the One Piece Fighter Z will ever be made? Uh, just like Dragon Ball Fighter Z, but the One Piece world style would be at. Oh, One Piece Fighter Z. I don't know. I'm not into fighting games really. It's funny. I have uh Fighter Z or Fighters for Dragon Ball, you know, but I barely play it. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not a huge fan of fighting games. But if you are, it'd be cool to have a One Piece fighting game like that. I guess I hear it's pretty good. Uh, what if Blackbeard knows where Uranus is? Eam was holding a picture of four people related in some way to ancient things beside Blackbeard. Uh, maybe. I would imagine Eam probably, I don't know if Eam knows exactly where the ancient weapons are, but he might, like, he might have an ability to know, like, if he sees a picture of, like, Shirahoshi, he knows, like, that's Poseidon. You know, he might be able to tell. He might be able to see, if he sees someone that's an ancient weapon, he knows instantly that's who they are. You know, it might, it might be an ability like that. Because if he knew where the ancient weapons were, the government would have them by now. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it might be some situation like that. Yeah. Uh, if you could hang out with one girl from One Piece, who would it be and what kind of fun would you have? It would be Robin, and we would just hang out at a coffee shop and just talk about, like, history and shit. I'm not even I'm not even kidding like seriously like if that was like yeah sure of course that would be fun that'd be great talk about like mythology and crap can you do uh can you make a video on what if Zoro had Daz bones as devil fruit um that would be a fun one if one of the rank swords are destroyed would the news be spread um I mean it would be spread in like the circles of like swordsmen and stuff like Yubashiri was a rank sword and it's destroyed but Zoro is not like sending out a press release or whatever so the number of swords do go down and, um, but, wait, hold on. Because there were, like, 50 Ruo Wazumono, but now there's, Yubashiri's gone, so there will only be 49. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big, if it's a politics thing, yeah, I don't, I don't talk politics on here. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess there's only 49 now. But then there's some other ones that were captured. I don't know how it would work. Because when... 
the, the way we got those numbers was through Tashigi, because Tashigi had that little notebook, and she's like, there's 12 Saijo, and there's, you know, 21 Owazamono, and like, yeah, but those numbers could change if new ones popped up or they were destroyed, so I guess it's the same with anything, you know? It's the same with anything that you write down. It's like, there are 50 of these swords. Well, that was like five years ago. Now there's only, you know, 42 or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. Somebody has to keep track of them. Can you kindly make complete videos on who is Joy Boy? Uh, I, I've done a few. I've done a lot of videos on Joy Boy before. I love it whenever I do Joy Boy, and it's, um, <laughs> I just use that image of the road poneglyphs with the smiley face and the straw hat on it. Like, that's my, that's my fill-in for Joy Boy, just like my fill-in for Vegapunk is Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. So it's always fun to talk about, um, it's always fun to talk about, uh, Vegapunk, because I get to use Rick in the thumbnail. And I get to, like, Photoshop or, like, uh, add Vegapunk's sweater to Rick. That's always fun. Like, hold on. Let me try to find one here. Uh, let's see. I know I did one last year on Mads. That's probably on here. Mads. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so here's, like, Rick Sanchez. Yeah. So I took an episode. This is from the episode where um, him and Jerry. Oh, the Whirly Durly Conspiracy. That was the episode. And I just, uh, this was actually a pain in the ass to do, to go through and change the color of everything on Rick's shirt. So, like, here's the, here's the original scene from the episode. So, you can see, like, he's, like, wounded and stuff. Here's, I had to Photoshop all that out. And then also change the colors of the gun to match the color of his shirt. So, that was a pain. But I did it, you know. And so, yeah, I just removed the wounds from his face as well. So, that that was good. I have not done a video on Dadan yet. I should do a video on Dadan. I think Dadan deserves a video. Do you think Big Mom's homies could be infused with devil fruit powers, like how Funk Freed was made? Do you think it's worthy of a video? I don't know if it's worthy of a video, but, like, I might, like, it would be worthy maybe just to do a video on, like, weird things you can do with devil fruits. Like, weird things, like, what happens if you use this fruit in this combination with this or something like that? Because there's a bunch of, like, little niche things, like you just mentioned, like Big Mom's ability, uh, uh, Moria's, too, creates, like, things. It creates, like, zombies, or, like, you know, Big Mom's soul fruit gives life to things and turns them into homies. So it's like, okay, well, now you're creating sentient life with your ability. Could those, could that sentient life you created eat devil fruits or learn hockey? Like, little, little things like that would be, I think, useful to, to like, mention. Uh, but, like, maybe not a whole video about that one particular topic, but, like, overall, like, all the little things that you could do with Devil Fruits. Uh, favorite Digimon? Uh, do I have that one on here, too? I think I do. I do! Digimon! And that, the, I mean, I love the first three seasons of Digimon as well, but, like, Digimon Frontier just finally did the thing that I wish they did at the beginning where it's, like, you can, like, become the Digimon. I don't know, because I'm always a Power Ranger kid. I'm always the guy that loves, like, morphers and, like, transforming into new forms and stuff like that. So they finally did Digimon Frontier where you, like, become the Digimon. And I think that was a really clever way to keeping it fresh. So it's, like, the first two seasons were kind of, like, together, like, sequel series and stuff. And then the third season introduced the whole, like, card thing and, like, capturing, you know, sort of like Pokemon, but not really. And then Digimon was, like, whole new whole new dynamic. They're not going to have Digimon companions. They become the Digimon. They get these really cool armors and things, and they have abilities, and they can fight and shit. And I like I love that a lot. So, yeah. I have not seen any other Digimon series after Frontier, though. 
But I remember getting home from school, elementary school, or maybe middle school at that point, watching Frontier. Frontier was great. If the red-haired pirates have an average bounty of one billion, does that monster... Oh, then does Monster the Monkey also have a one billion berry bounty? Yes. Actually, his is the highest right now, uh, right behind Shanks. Shanks is like four billion. Uh, Monsters is like 3.9. I mean, it's really up there. You don't want to mess with that monkey. It's my 18th birthday today. Happy birthday, Derek. Um... I do need to rewatch Frontier. It's been a long time. How do you find the time to read all these manga? <laughs> That's the, you know, cue uh, Invincible meme. That's the neat part. I don't. I really don't. Like, a lot of stuff that I've read, it's usually like, like Jujutsu Kaisen, for example. I've only read, like, the first three volumes. Everything else I pick up just by people, like, talking about it online or, like, Cliff Notes versions and stuff. I don't have a lot of time to read a lot of stuff. Uh, then there's also, like, you know, I don't want to read manga sometimes. Maybe I don't want to read. I'm reading Mistborn right now because Rusted recommended it to me. I really like that one, so. And then I want to watch. I'm watching Angel right now. So it's like I'm doing, like, balancing my free time and doing stuff. Any plans for the summer? I am going to California this summer, actually. I'm going in July with my uncle. And we're going to, well, first we're going to L.A. for Anime Expo. So if nothing horrible happens to Los Angeles or if another new strain of COVID doesn't hit, like the Galactatron or Unicron strain of um, COVID doesn't hit or if all of L.A. doesn't burn down, you know, uh, provided nothing horrible happens, uh, we're going to be going to L.A. for Anime Expo for four days. Hopefully I'll get to meet. I mean, the idea is we want to do like a live session of One Piece D&D. So I don't know. I think Rustage is, is coming. I think he's game. Uh, none of this is for certain. Noble lives in L.A., so that'll be easy for him. So then Spooky and then Briggs, if they could also come, we could do a live. We would film it, too, and upload it later. Uh, no, we would just we would just do it right there. And if you, you want to see it, you have to come to L.A. So that'll be fun. Um, is your uncle a weeb? He's watched some anime because he stayed at my house a few times uh, in December and January. He stayed for my house for like a week and uh, we watched some stuff. We watched um, Stone Ocean together. We watched like the first season or the first half season of Stone Ocean. I showed him an episode of Dr. Stone. I, sh I showed him an episode of Sword Art Online because he's really he's more into like science fiction kind of stuff, you know, like science fiction, like Star Trek. He's a huge Star Trek nerd, right? So he's like the old school kind of nerd of like the original Star Trek and then like Next Generation and Star Wars and that kind of stuff. So he likes anime, though. He's seen a few anime. Uh, he watched Promise Neverland. Saw that before. Um, so it's a few episodes and stuff he's he's watched. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we're going to go there and then we're going to go to other after L.A. We're going to go to like San Diego. We're going to go to Yosemite. We're going to go to San Francisco. I got to make um, I'm going to be making videos on the road. Like, when we stop places, I'll make videos, like, while I'm traveling on vacation. But I, I really do need to sit down and make a few videos for the channels, you know, when um, before I leave. And the problem is I'm, I'm a big procrastinator, so it's like, and I don't schedule shit. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not leaving until July. That's, like, four months from now. And then, like, next month I'll be like, that's, like, three months from now. And then it'll be two months. And, like, that's, like, a month from now. And then it'll be like, oh, shit, I'm leaving in a week and I don't have anything planned. So I really need to do this shit now. My plan is honestly just to film Law Week. I'll just film Law Week. And then I'll have Law Week on the channel while I'm gone. Maybe I'll film like five videos or six videos about law and then boom, boom, boom. I don't know if they'll all be like 20 minutes long. They might be shorter than ravaged videos, but just to get something out, you know. Was it satisfying to fight a brick in Isekai D&D? It kind of was. Um, I was a little afraid, you know, Barry might, you know, take offense, but everything worked out pretty good. Yeah. Uh, One Punch Man again. Like, well, considering where we're at right now in One Punch Man, I might make a video about that once again on the side channel. It actually is kind of freeing to have it on the side channel because even when I made those videos on the main channel, I also had to acknowledge, like, like I'm doing, like, One Piece video, One Piece video, One Piece video. Views are up. Subscribers are up. Everything's going up. And it's like, I want to make a One Punch Man video. If I do that, everything's going to go down. But it's like, fuck it. I'll do it anyway. And I did it, and everything went down. But it's like, here's the video. So it actually probably would be best if I put this stuff up on the side channel. Because then I don't, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about, like, a channel, like, ruining the algorithm or whatever. I can just put it up on the side channel. 
Here's Teching 101 Miscellaneous, and here's the main one. Here you go. Um, can't believe you chose Law over Luffy. Man, I'm sorry. I'm not the only one. You know, <laughs> Law's cooler. I'm sorry. Luffy, I love Luffy. He's the main character of the story. You got Nightmare Luffy back here. He's really badass. You know, he could stretch. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what he's doing with the Awakening and everything. Gear Forth is amazing. Snake Man is incredible. I love Luffy. But I'm sorry, Law is cooler. He just is objectively cooler. He's got a poofy hat. He's got a submarine. He's got a goate goatee. He's got tattoos. He's got a sword. Does Luffy have a sword? I don't think so. You know, he has the coolest power in all of One Piece. You know, like, I'm sorry. He's cooler. I think I like Eustace Kid more than Law. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's fine, too. But, like, I'm just, I'm just being funny for the sake of it. Obviously, it's not objective, but, yeah. Law is cooler. I'm sorry. <laughs> for me, anyway. And then Frankie's the coolest of all of them. I would actually, I, I could honestly easily go Frankie, Robin, and then Law as, like, my three favorite One Piece characters. I think that actually makes a lot of sense right there. Go Frankie, Robin, and Law. Luffy doesn't have a sword yet. Yet. All right, what's up here? Yet. Uh, have you read Da Don Da Don Da Don? Uh, I've only seen a few. Wait, was that an episode? Oh, I'm thinking of Dura Ra 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 Ra. I've seen Dura Ra 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 Ra. I haven't read Da Don Da Don Da Don. Uh, are you excited for episode 114, 1014 tonight? Uh, is it tonight? Because I know Toei got hacked, and like that was a whole thing where. You know, the episode was delayed. Are they coming back already? Is the next episode going to be tonight? Yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, please see the Ichigo tat. I tagged you in on Twitter. I retweeted that one. If it's the if it's the tattoo with Ichigo with the hollow, like his hollow form, I retweeted that. That was dope. That was awesome, dude. Yeah, good job. I want to get a tattoo too, but I'm too much of a wimp. Have you heard the Japanese openings for Digimon? Yes, I have. I actually have some of them on my playlist that I listen to in my car. Uh, who's done less this arc, Brooke or Usopp? Both have done things, but both have not been, like, major fights. Just because they're not in major fights does not mean they haven't done anything. Brooke took out a bunch of Black Maria's underlings, plus one of the numbers, and plus did a bunch of other stuff to, like, help Robin out. Um, and then Usopp had his, you know, help as well, like, you know, the fight with, uh, Page One briefly, and then, uh, you know, his little Conqueror's hockey speech, and then his speech to Kinemon on why they should live. They had their moments, they just didn't fight against a major villain, and that's okay. They can have other moments, you know? So, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Crunchyroll absorbing Funimation? I mean, that's just that's just business shit. I'm like, it's like, whatever. It's like, uh, I knew that something like, 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 yeah, something like that would have happened at some point. You know, whenever I hear about that, I never really get excited about businesses merging or buying stuff out. I, I never really get excited about that, you know? Same thing like when Disney bought out Fox. And it's like, okay, so am I am I supposed to care about this? I mean, I guess I, I care about it in the sense that, like, the the Disney Corporation is slowly getting more and more and more and more and more powerful. Here's a little fun fact for you. There's, like, six companies that run the entire world. Like, every, like it, if you actively tried, oh, shit, a hundred doll hairs from Laura True Love. I recently found out you like Greek mythology. So did you know that Hades in, is not the Greek, the god of death? He is the god of the dead. Well, they're already dead. Yeah, there's a thing. It's like comparing the underworld to hell. Not the same thing. But yeah, I usually say Hades is the god of dead or the death, whatever. Um, it's Thanatos. Yes, uh, he's the one that actually kills people. Yeah, same thing like in Egyptian mythology. Everyone always thinks Anubis is the god of the death, and and that's annoying because he's not. So Anubis works in like the underworld. He's like the one of the dudes I think that balances the scales to make sure that you're like you know uh, worthy of going to the good afterlife or the bad afterlife or whatever. Like he judges your soul. But Anubis is not like the objective god of the dead in Egyptian mythology. There's so many gods in Egypt, but uh, Os. Cyrus is the person you want to talk to. If you get sent to the underworld in Egyptian mythology, like if you were to die and it turns out that the Egyptians were right and it's actually the Egyptian mythology and you want to complain to the leader of the underworld, you want to talk to Osiris. That's the CEO in charge. You want to talk to Osiris. You don't want to talk to Anubis. He's more like middle management kind of guy. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's there's so many things to open up with that. Like and it's like comparing, like I said, like hell to underworld or Nefelheim, not the same thing. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going down here. Uh, I am going to turn off Super Chats, though, at this point, because I think we'll be ending the stream soon. 
Excuse me. Yeah, Karen gets sent to hell. Excuse me. I would like to speak to your manager. This is horrible down here. I would not, like, I have to live on the, the, the lake of lava, and there's a, a bed of spikes where my king-size bed should be. I want to speak to your manager. Anubis is there, and he's really flustered, and he's like, oh, okay, this way, ma'am. You know, just like, Karen just barges into Osiris's office. Once again, though, Osiris, the, the underworld, the, um, the land of the dead is not torture, so I shouldn't say, you know, bed of spikes or whatever, but, you know, well, maybe for the Karen, I don't know. I shouldn't say that, because my mom's name is Karen, and she, by the way, my mom hates the meme, but it's so funny whenever she brings up the meme, because whenever she brings up the meme, she's a total Karen, <laughs> and her name is Karen. <laughs> it's just so funny to me. Oh my god, I gotta tell you the story of the, the most Karen thing I've ever heard my mom say. I've told it before, but I gotta tell it again, because it's, it is never not funny, okay? Oh god, alright, um... Let's see. Do you think Vegapunk is Frankie's grandfather? Nah, I don't I don't think there's gonna be any family relation there. But yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, if Frankie met Vegapunk, he would have some stuff to say to him, of course. But I don't think that, you know, they're blood related or anything. Uh let's see. Um I answered that one. Uh who would win in a fight? King and Katakuri answered that one. Currently, there is a flu epidemic in my country, which I have, wh where I live. Thanks for keeping us entertained. Also, Monster was underwhelming. Oh, no, oh, Monster, not the monkey from Shanks's crew, but Monster, the, the story. I haven't seen it yet. My aunt's name is also named Karen. You see that? How does that go? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. But anyway, I got to tell you this story. Okay, so... um. <laughs> I was back when I was living with my mom. I was in the kitchen. I was making dinner. She's in the living room, which is right next to the kitchen. She's watching The Bachelor. No, no, she was watching Inside Edition because she always watched The Bachelor and then she would watch her Inside Edition, which is like the TMZ kind of. I spit all over my keyboard there, but kind of like the TMZ sort of like, what are the celebrities up to today? And my mom loves that shit. So whatever. She's in there watching it. There's a story on the on Inside Edition or something about the Karen thing. And my mom is so upset. She's just like, she's like, why did they have to pick the name Karen? How come Karen has to be the, the name of that? And I'm in the kitchen making dinner, and I'm just like, I don't know, Mom. I mean, that's just how this goes. And she's like, well, how would you feel if it was Matt? And I'm like, eh, probably it would suck. But, like, I'm, I'm way more used to the Internet than you. So I'd, I'd be okay with it, I guess. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. And so my mom is like, you know what? I think all the Karens in the world should come together and complain about the Karen meme. And she said that. She did not say that as a joke, guys. She did not say that as a joke. She did not say that as, like, sarcasm. No. She actually said, I, I think all the Karens should come together and we should complain about this. And I immediately dropped my knife or whatever I was, like, using to chop onions. I, I dropped whatever, and I just immediately doubled over laughing on the floor for, like, a whole solid minute because it was the funniest shit. That is the most Karen thing that has ever been said. And I'm like, holy shit. Oh, my God. That's a Karen hive mind. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. That's going to be the story when like in years because my mom is very healthy. My mom works out a lot. She exercises. My mom wants to live to be like 100 years old. She's told me that before. But decades from now, on the day my mother finally passes away, that is the story I'm telling at her funeral. <laughs> like that's the story right there. Oh man, unless she outlives me, but whatever. Karen's of the world unite. I've also heard that um, there's like there's like research done into this and like the last year, Karen has dropped significantly at being like a baby name like it used to be like it's the lowest it's ever been since like the 1950s, you know, because no one is naming their daughters Karen anymore. It'll just be something else, though. It'll be, like, in 20 years, it'll just be, like, Stacy. You know, it'll just be those Stacys over there. It'll just be that. I mean, nothing will change, but still. The Coalition of Karens. The Coalition of Karens. 
Can you read my super chat? Ivani. Hold on. Uh, it is not showing up in my logs, so hold on. Let me refresh it. It also, something I've discovered from last time, if you send me a message over the um, membership tab, not the chat, then it does not show up in the log, oddly enough. I don't know why, but that's how it happens. So let me go to the supers again. Here it is. When is the next One Piece chapter coming out? Um, next week. The official will be on March, at least my time zone, Eastern time zone. It'll probably be out around 10 or 11 o'clock on the 27th, March 27th. Um, it'll be out maybe a little bit you know, earlier, later, depending on your time zones. Um, the unofficial translation will probably be out on uh, the 24th or the 25th. Um, but that's what we're looking at there. Yeah. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Um, yeah. I think my cousin's Facebook might have gotten hacked because he sent me, my cousin sent me a message today that was like, Hey there, hello, check out this video I'm sending everyone. And I'm like, I don't think Mike would have sent me that. I was like, Mike, are you okay, buddy? Because I don't, I don't typically just message somebody like, hi there, friend, I am your friend. Here is a link I send everybody. <laughs> you know, like, eh, something's going on with that, yeah. In the color spread of 1039, there was a monkey pointing to the resin. Is that the thing that you're talking about? Because that was a thing that was mentioned before. Yeah. People still have Facebook. I use Messenger to talk to people all the time, yeah. What's my favorite D&D &D class? Uh, I'm a sucker for sorcerers because I played a sorcerer as my first character I ever drew, I ever, uh, drew up. And, of course, you kind of have, like, a connection to your, here's your first character, you know what I mean? And he's not dead. Um, Adrin. Adrin Weinrich was his name. Uh, I took Weinrich from, it's W-Y-N-R-I-C. Uh, I, I liked Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. I'm like, Elric is a really cool name, but I don't want to, I just don't want to steal Elric. So I'm like, Weinrich, like wine. And it's like, uh, it works. And then Adrin, I can't, I think I just looked up a name of like half elf because he was a half elf, half elf names. And it's like Adrin was on there. I'm like, okay, Adrin Weinrich. So whatever. He was a sorcerer for our ever first campaign. And we haven't played that campaign in years, mostly because the DM, I think, I think the DM, it's just like busy with life and just was not as interested in running the campaign anymore and like had other stuff going on. And it's hard being a DM. I mean, like you got to plan things. You got to I mean like ostensibly you're supposed to plan things, but like what, what are we going to do next week? And then the week after that, or like what next session? And like, I think he was just really busy. And then like some stuff with work got involved and it's just like, I can't run this anymore. And so um, if we would probably have to run that campaign again, it would probably have to be with a completely different DM. So it's like we had the same DM for like seven or like like we got up to like level seven, I think. And then we would have a whole new DM all together. So that would be different. But, you know, it's it's hard to do that. I really want to do a uh, I really want to do my own campaign uh, with my friends at some point. But we have this other campaign we're doing right now. So we're going to do that. I'm actually running that. Well, I'm not running. I'm playing in that tomorrow. So, yeah. But at some point I have that map of the world that I have ready to go. So we'll bust that out at some point i also found a uh the the same place that made this uh king portrait back here well um you know they didn't they didn't make it stefan made it but they printed it out i'll just throw it up there for you the awesome king portrait there it goes so that the awesome king portrait uh the place where i got this printed out is uh i, I found it like a copy place and i'm like oh my god you could just walk in here and get things printed out and he's like yeah that's what we do that's our business like they didn't even ask like like uh are, is, do you have authority like is this your drawing to do that like no i just gave them a flash drive and they just printed this out it was awesome it was so easy so i might just go over there and uh get this uh map this world map of my world that i made for um D and d and just get that printed out and then i can have that for D and d so really really cool i could show you it <laughs> do, do you want to see my D and d world I totally didn't rip anything off from any other fictional property. <laughs> totally didn't. Um, there it is. Yay. This isn't even the final version. This is like I have to – I've been tweaking it lately, so I have to go back and add some new stuff to it. But, yeah, there's, a, there's my world. There's my world. Uh, would you give the fruitless straw hats different fruits? Um, 
I made a video a few years ago talking about like what fruits I would give the straw hats. So I would check that out. You are a spammer. So you know what we do to spammers around here? We time them out for about a minute, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be ending the stream soon. Um, yeah, but thank you for the hundred, Laura. Uh, let's see. The don, da don, da don. Yeah, I read all of these. Yeah. Uh, what is Shanks' connection with Joy Boy? Uh, Shanks uh, probably has the Will of D, so probably connected to that. Let me check out the tattoo thing. If it's the tattoo, like I said, with um, Ichigo's um, Hollow. I did see that a few days ago, and I retweeted it. I'm not seeing anything new right now, though, on my Twitter. So, yeah. My super chat got missed, too. Well, let's check it. Thank you for getting me into Undead Unlock. You're welcome. I love Undead Unlock. I want to start reviewing that one, too. Last few episodes have been really... I mean, chapters have been fire. Oh, they came out early this week, so go check them out. They came out early. When did you make that map? Uh, I started working on that map um, right around the time COVID really started getting really big. The, the second wave of COVID. So COVID first, like the first lockdown was March 2020. And then during the summer, it kind of loosened a little bit. And then we got the second wave in like late 2020, just when it was starting to get cold again. So that whole like winter, the winter of like 2020 and 2021, I was like making that map and I was like playing RuneScape again, got really into that. So just like that was what I was doing during like lockdown. Um, so yeah, and I've been tweaking it a little bit since then. It's uh, over Ink Carnate, uh, I N K A R N A T E, Ink Carnate. Uh, it's a great website. You have to pay for the service, but it's not that expensive, and you can make some really badass maps with it. So if you're a fan of D and D, if you do a lot of like sessions with D and D, um, do it. Yeah, RuneScape is the most zero like two thousands reference ever. There's even references in the in the map. I put Lunar Island in the map. Like yeah. I hope that in between Wano and the next mega arc, we'd have a few chapters of the crew just hanging out. I've always said that. I even said that in the video yesterday, the first mate video. I've always wanted that. So if Oda did that, I would be as happy as a clam. And I guess clams are pretty happy, I guess. I don't know why that saying is a saying, but whatever. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, we're about an hour and a half. So I think I'm going to end it there. Thanks for everybody for watching. This was fun. Uh, what's coming up? So tomorrow... The video on Roger's channel is going to be coming out, so that'll be a discussion with me and some other YouTubers that'll be in that, so that'll be in lieu of the chapter. I will put a tweet out when that comes out, as well as like a, like a community post, so you guys can go over there and check that out when it's live. Um, I should actually just message Roger and ask him when that's coming out tomorrow, but anyway, yeah, so that'll be coming out. Um, I might do another video. Actually, yeah, I'll probably do a video tomorrow, too, just in general. I might wait until after that video's out, though, so you have time to watch that, and then maybe later in the day tomorrow I'll do a video. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm playing D&D &D tomorrow. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I could film it in the morning, and then Rogers will probably come out in early afternoon, I'm assuming. His will probably be out, like, around noon. So I could film my video in the morning, his will come out, and then I could just schedule mine to be released maybe around 4 or 5, like, later in the afternoon. Yeah, I could do that. We could do that. Uh, what, what, actually, you know what? Fuck it. What, what video do you want me to make tomorrow? What do you want me to talk about? I'll talk about whatever you guys want me to talk about. We're here. We might as well just ask. You know, it saves me time for trying to come up with ideas. Here you go. What, what am I talking about tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> Agumon or Vmon? I like Agumon. Agumon's cool. Uh, let's see. Shanks being evil, Ben 10, Black Clover. Now, a One Piece topic. It has to be a One Piece topic. Um, a Robin video, maybe. Blackbeard third personality. Predictions for the next chapter. I, you know what? I never do prediction videos. I never sit down at window installation. I never do videos where I sit down and actually just make discussions about what I think is going to happen next, like as the point of the video. So I might honestly just do that. That's actually a good, that, that, that's a good one. Honestly, for everything that's been going on. Sure. Like different avenues. Like I could talk about different possibilities. It could happen. Like maybe it might go this direction. Maybe it might go this direction. I've done videos like that before. Smoker in his bike, Egyptian devil food videos. Okay. Um, nipple lasers the nipple laser videos coming. Uh, one piece D and D the movie. Who, who will die in Wano? I don't want to do that. You know. Schooling system in One Piece. Check your email. <laughs> video on checking my email. Here's how to check your email. All right, I might just do the prediction video, though. That sounds like a good one, considering also it's a Sunday and there's not going to be any video. So, well, we're kind of... Well, no, because the video we did with Roger and everybody, that's kind of more of just a discussion on 1043. Might just do a prediction, like different paths it could take. I don't know. I don't know. Boa Hancock video? That would be good. Frankie being Pluton. I don't want Frankie to be Pluton, really. I want Frankie to be able to build it, but I don't want Frankie to be the device itself. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, anyway, probably a prediction video, but we'll see if I come up with another idea or if I read another one that I like more. <laughs> we'll see. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this will be teching. I'm going to go eat and then maybe go watch the Jujutsu Kaisen movie. So yeah, that'll be cool. Have a good one, everybody. This will be teching, signing out. I'll make a video about that too, uh, probably on the side channel. See ya.